Good morning, it's Monday, June 15th, 2020. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Telling the Story, and our scripture is Psalm chapter 105. The Lord brought his people out of Egypt loaded with silver and gold, and not one among the tribes of Israel even stumbled. Egypt was glad when they were gone, for they feared them greatly. The Lord spread a cloud above them as a covering and gave them a great fire to light the darkness. They asked for meat, and he sent them quail. He satisfied their hunger with manna bred from heaven. He split open a rock, and water gushed out to form a river through the dry wasteland. For he remembered his sacred promise to his servant Abraham. So he brought his people out of Egypt with joy his chosen ones with rejoicing. He gave his people the lands of pagan nations, and they harvested crops that others planted. All this happened so they would follow his decrees and obey his instructions. Praise the Lord. If you've ever slowly walked through a graveyard, taking the time and thoughtful tour, you've also come away wondering about the rest of the story of the lives that lay buried there. You wonder what it was like to be that person, what joys and pains and sorrows and good times are also interred beneath the stone in the cold earth. I've seen a few lengthy epistles on a few headstones that tried to get as much of the story as possible carved in stone. But how can you get a person's life summarized in a hundred words or less, or for that matter, in a thousand pages? That was the opener for the conversation between my best friend and me several days ago. We were headed for yet another doctor's appointment, and the pensive question bit into the silence as we drove. How can you tell a person's entire story? Of course, being the professional clergy in the conversation, my stock answer came tumbling out before I even considered. Nobody can tell another story. We write our own obituary with the way we live, every thought, action, relationship, gift, and conversation. Our conversation lasted all the way to Winston. And then the psalmist showed up in today's lection, Israel's Epitaph. Every bit of what happened was so Israel would obey God's laws and will. And doesn't that put meat on the bones of captivity and bondage and suffering and plagues and Passover, wilderness, and all the stories since Eden? Doesn't it sum up the story of humankind from the very moment of creation? God, the loving creator and parent of us all, did everything with us to lead us to him his will, and a relationship with him. I've considered my bride's question ever since the moment it pierced that quiet ride we were having, and it led my mind back to when I was 19, and my dad was having that conversation with me as I was getting ready to leave my parents' home and form a new household with Elizabeth. Dad only told me two things, the first being when the difficult times came, those would be hours to work through. He said the leaving and cleaving clause in those marriage vows meant accepting responsibility and the work necessary to making a marriage last and also count. The second thing Dad told me was like the psalmist summary. He said, everything your mom and I have tried to do for and with you was so that you'll be closer to God. Dad did say one other thing, but he said it with a smile, and that was, and remember, you can always come home for a visit. And he looked at me and narrowed his eyes and he said, a visit. I got it. The leaving was a one-way door. I think it's an inescapable question that flows from considering the worth of your story. It's a question that most people on the longer side of five or six decades of living or more have to entertain. Let's face it, when you get near that three score and ten thing, you can't avoid thinking about the next chapter. Life is brief, and it moves quickly and disappears like a wisp of wind. Or, as Dad was also fond of saying in his later years, I ain't buying any green bananas. In the interest of tying today's thoughts and Israel's story together with your story and mine, remember that Israel's story, as told by the psalmist, was all about God's presence and providence. It was rescue, relationship, 
and remembering. And this is exactly the summary of why Jesus came. He died to rescue us and draw us into an eternity of relationship, and he doesn't want us to ever forget that. Let's pray together. Father, we're mindful that our story does matter. We care that people know we lived and that our lives counted. Help us to live so as to leave obedient footprints following after you. Help us to make our lives stories impossible to tell without seeing your holy child Jesus on every page. For you today, do you recall that pizza commercial line that asked the question, so what do you want on your tombstone? Well, you're answering that question every day. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.